friends, today we are going to study about consumption function. In this session, we are going to study about the meaning of consumption function. Next, we will understand the concepts of average propensity to consume that is APC and marginal propensity to consume that is MPC. Further, we will also understand the relationship between APC and MPC. We will also know about Fisher's Intertemporal Choice Model. Introduction Consumption expenditure is the major constituent of aggregate demand in any economy. Keynes, however, assumed that in the short run, real consumer spending is primarily determined by current real personal disposable income. That is, the rise in income will lead to rise in consumption. Fundamental Psychological Law of Consumption The psychological law of consumption is based on the following propositions. Firstly, as income increases, consumption expenditure increases, but less proportionately. Secondly, income is always bifurcated into spending and savings. Thirdly, increase in income will increase the savings. Thus, Keynes law is limited by the following assumptions. Firstly, constancy of psychological and institutional factors. Secondly, normal economic conditions. Thirdly, laissez fair policy. Definition of consumption function. Consumption function is defined as the schedule detailing the relationship between aggregate consumption expenditure and gross national income. Therefore, C is equal to function of Y, F is greater than 0, where C represents consumption and Y represents income. Thus, the equation C is equal to function of Y shows the functional relationship between C and Y, where C is dependent on Y and Y is an independent variable. That is, C is determined by Y. The consumption function can also be written as C equals A plus BY. Let us understand consumption function with the help of a figure. Here, A is the autonomous consumption. That is, even when income is zero, the constant amount of consumption a person has. B is the propensity to consume which depends on income y. That is, as the income increases, there is increase in the consumption at the constant rate. Thus, B is known as marginal propensity to consume which lies between 0 and 1 and is constant for any level of income. We can see that the y-axis shows consumption expenditure E while the x-axis shows income y. The slope C represents marginal propensity to consume, that is MPC. In this figure, we also represent that C equals A plus BY, which is the consumption function. Here, the line is linear because MPC is constant. Saving function The saving function is just disposable income minus the consumption function. It is also equal to the amount of induced saving minus autonomous consumption. Thus, S equals minus A minus BY. Let us understand the saving function with the help of a figure. Like consumption, saving is also a function of income that is Saving also depends upon the level of income. Saving is the excess of income over consumption expenditure. Saving function refers to the functional relationship between saving and national income. In this figure, y-axis represents saving, while the x-axis represents disposable income. SS line is the saving function, which is negatively sloping where the slope is 1 minus b equals change in s by change in y. Point b represents 
the break even point. Thus, the line is linear because MPS is constant. Schedule of the propensity to consume. Let us understand the schedule of propensity to consume with the help of an example. With the income of rupees 10 crores, we have a consumption of rupees 20 crores. As the income increases by rupees 10 crores, the consumption increases by rupees 5 crores. And this continues till we have reached the income to rupees 60 crores and the consumption to rupees 45 crores. Here we get to see that the income increases by rupees 10 crores each time and the consumption by rupees 5 crores. Now let us understand with the help of a figure. In this figure, a line OY with the X axis has been drawn. Because line OY meets with the X axis, every point on it is equidistant from both the X axis and the Y axis depicts the income line. The CC curve represents the consumption schedule. It is evident from the figure that the consumption function curve CC deviates from the line OY. At lower levels of income, the consumption function curve CC lies above the OY line, signifying that at these lower levels of income, consumption is greater than the income. With increase in the income from Y1 to Y2, the consumption increases, but less proportionate as evident from the figure that is y1 y2 is less than c1 c2 also as income increases we can see there is provision for savings too with increase in income a part of income is saved that is ss dash average propensity to consume that is apc the average propensity to consume is defined as the ratio of aggregate or total consumption to aggregate income in a given period of time. Thus, the value of average propensity to consume for any income level may be found by APC equals C by Y. Therefore, APS equals S by Y equals 1 minus C by Y. Thus, APC is required to tell us what proportion of the total cost of a given output from planned employment may be expected to be recovered from selling consumer goods, wherein APS tells us what proportion of the total cost of a given output will have to be recovered by the sale of capital good. In the table shown, an increase in income by rupees 10 crore. The amount of consumption has risen by rupees 5 crore and the remaining amount has been saved. The same applies to further increase in income and consumption. In this table, while MPC remains constant at rupees 5 crore, APC is falling with the increase in income. It is noted that this is termed as the Keynesian consumption function and it is linear as MPC which measures the slope of the consumption function curve is constant. While MPC is constant, APC falls with increase in national income. The fall in APC with the increase in income has an important implication that increase in consumption is not proportional to increase in income. MPC is less than APC at various levels of income. Next is marginal propensity to consume that is MPC. MPC equals change in C by change in Y less than 1. MPC is constant when consumption function is linear. But in case of non-linear consumption function, MPC will not be constant. However, MPC is always positive but less than 1. According to Keynes, the propensity to consume is a fairly stable function of income 
with the marginal propensity to consume being positive but less than unity. Keynes, however, did not state what would be the exact nature of the MPC within the limits laid down. The MPC may rise, fall or remain constant between the limits set. Secondly, however, he implicitly stated that the MPC would not be constant when cyclical fluctuations cause changes in objectives, factors determining the propensity to consume. Graphical measurement of APC and MPC. Diagrammatically, the average propensity to consume is measured at a single point on the C curve. In the following figure, it is determined at point A, where C by Y gives APC. The marginal propensity to consume, on the other hand, is measured by the slope or gradient of the C curve, that is, the consumption function schedule or the curve. To ascertain the slope of the C curve, we draw a horizontal line through A, the previous consumption income point, and then measure vertically to the tangent P, the changed consumption income point. We shall find that the ratio of the vertical length PM to the horizontal length AM is 0 0.8. Empirical relationship between APC and MPC. The two consumption propensities are closely interrelated. Firstly, when the MPC is constant, the consumption function is linear, that is, a straight line curve. The APC will also be constant only if the consumption function passes through the origin. When it does not pass through the origin, the APC will not be constant. Secondly, as income rises, the MPC also falls, but it falls to a greater extent than the APC. Thirdly, as income falls, the MPC rises. The APC will also rise, but at a slower rate. Fisher's Intertemporal Choice Model Erwin Fisher developed the theory of intertemporal choice in his book Theory of Interest in 1930. Fisher's model showed how rational forward looking consumers choose consumption for the present and future to maximize their lifetime satisfaction. According to Fisher, an individual's impatience depends on four characteristics of his income stream. The size, the time shape, the composition and risk. Besides this, foresight, self-control, habit, expectation of life and bequest motive or concern for life of others are the five personal factors that determine a person's impatience which in turn determines his time preference. As the selection of consumers change over time, we take consumption in one period as a composite commodity. Suppose there is one consumer and commodities and two periods. Preferences are given by U equals X1, X2 where xt is equal to xt1 till xtn. Income in period t is yt, savings in period 1 is s1, spending in period t is ct and r is the interest rate. If the person is unable to borrow against the future income in the first period, then he is the subject to separate budget constraint in each period. C1 plus S1 is less than equal to Y1 which is the first equation. C2 is less than equal to Y2 plus S1 into 1 plus R which is the second equation. On the other hand, if such borrowing is possible then the person is subject to a single intertemporal budget constraint. C1 plus C2 divided by 1 plus r equals y1 plus y2 divided by 1 plus r is the third equation. Here, 
In this figure, we can understand that the left hand side shows the present value of expenditure and right hand side depicts the present value of income. Multiplying the equation by 1 plus r would give us the corresponding future values. The y axis represents C2 and the x axis represents C1. The straight line linear curve has two points which cuts the y axis at the equation y1 into 1 plus r plus y2 and the x axis at y1 plus y2 by 1 plus r. Now, the consumer has to choose C1 and C2 so as to maximize U equals C1 plus C2 subject to C1 plus C2 by 1 plus R equals Y1 plus Y2 by 1 plus R. A consumer may be a net saver or a net borrower. If he is initially at a level of consumption where he is neither a net borrower nor a net saver, an increase in income may make him a net saver or a net borrower depending on his preferences. We can understand this with the help of the figure. In the figure, we can see that x axis represents C1, y axis represents C2. In the straight line curve, which is y2 plus y1 into 1 plus r, which touches y1 plus y2 by 1 plus r. In this figure, three indifference curves are seen and the equilibrium point seen is point A. If the consumer is a net saver, he will save more in the current period due to the substitution effect and consume more in the current period due to the income effect. The net effect thus becomes uncertain if the consumer is a net borrower. However, he will tend to consume less in the current period due to the substitution effect and income effect thereby reducing his overall current consumption. Summary So, in today's session, we have studied about the basics of consumption function, saving function, average propensity to consume, marginal propensity to consume and the relationship between APC and MPC. We have also studied about Fisher's intertemporal choice model during this session. Thank you.